Welcome back to the channel and this is going to be a continuation of doing this very simple part. Now if you remember that I created this doing using AutoCAD 2D and in this one I'm going to use 3D and what's going to happen is that we're going to see these other hidden lines that I did not include when I created that AutoCAD 2D one. So when we jump into the 3D and we get to doing the drafting portion there should be some more hidden lines that's going to appear right. You can kind of comment and see if you can guess where they are. All right, so let's jump over to AutoCAD and get started. Okay, let's go ahead and knock out our normal housekeeping. I'll go ahead and turn the grid off on this one. So we'll snap the grid off. Next thing we're gonna do is that we're gonna turn our ortho on and then we'll go ahead and take a look at our normal running old snaps that we typically use. Uh, I tend to like to have the quadrant on as well. Okay, so these are the ones I'm going to use. And let's go ahead and start creating this in 3D. Now we can go ahead and change the ribbon now or we can do it later. That's going to be strictly up to you. I usually kind of wait a little bit. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and switch it over now. And the one I'll be using is the 3D modeling. So once I switch over to 3D modeling, all of the same commands are located on the bar here at the top, right? So we still have our line commands and things of that nature, and it's still loading up a little bit. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we still have our normal commands here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and use some of these primitive commands just to kind of give you an introduction or show you some of these things, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of rotate my isometric view by selecting this lower corner here. And once I do that, now I can clearly see the front, right, and the top. Those are going to be the three sides that typically creates an isometric. Now we're going to use the box command, right? So you can see these are our primitive tools, or just kind of predefined or preselected, and it'll save us some time. So I'll go ahead and use the box one. And the way this is working is that you put in the X and Y coordinates and then the Z. So I'm going to click here. And now I have to tell it where to go in respect to the X and Y. Exact same things that we learned in AutoCAD. But in this case, the X is going to be 100. I'll use the comma. The Y dimension here should be 50. And then the height of this is going to be 15. Right? So let's go ahead and zoom that into, into view here. And now you can see that I created all three sides of that relatively easy. Right? So that's the good thing about using the box. And this is a 3D object. If we go ahead and check it in the shades of gray, you will see that it is a solid. All right, let's go ahead and jump back to the wireframe. And I'm going to use the regular wireframe and not the 2D wireframe. Because remember, that gives me options to use my gizmo. All right, the next one, I'm going to go ahead and create these shapes, right? I'm just going to draw them and then I'll go ahead and um, extrude them and do all that other stuff. Let's go ahead and use a polyline. So I'm going to go with the polyline command here. I'll start off by creating a line here. I'm going to go this direction, a distance of 35. Then we're going to go up this direction of 50. And then we're going to go over this direction, 20. And then I'll just type in C and close it, right? So I'm going to do the exact same thing again, except I'm going to have this one facing the opposite direction. So I'll use the polyline. I'll click here. I'm going to go this direction. And remember, this is 35. We're going to go up a distance of 50, down this direction, 20, and then C to close, right? All right, so now we have both of our sides that we need. Next, I'm just going to go ahead and place these on here, or we can extrude these and place them on later. Strictly doesn't matter to me. Either way will work. Let's go ahead and extrude them, and then we'll show you that we can just go ahead and move them that way. So I'm going to select both of these objects, extrude them, right? Once I hit enter, I can either go up or down. It does not matter. Now, depending on how are, are the numbers that you have, and I'll switch over to the, the drawing here in a second just to show you what I mean by that. This overall height, you can either choose to do the math or you can choose to put it at its original height and then let in, uh, AutoCAD take care of that for us. So I'm just going to extrude this up a height of 50, and I'll show you where I got the 50 from. All right. So what we're looking at is this overall height here. So I extruded this, the height from here going all the way up, and that's 50. Now, I could have done the math and said 50 minus 15, which is 35, and I could have extruded it up at 
at 35 but then I would have to place those cylinders or those not really cylinders those shapes that I just extruded I would have to place them on this endpoint but since we extruded it at 50 make sure you put it at the bottom endpoint okay so now when I go to move these and I have to move them one by one I'm gonna move this one go ahead and hit the enter button and I'm gonna put it from this endpoint down to that endpoint same thing on this one right so I'm just gonna move this one and I'll grab this endpoint down to this endpoint now these are overlapping with each other and I know it might be a little bit difficult to see but remember that we can jump in in the shades of gray or something of that nature and then you can see kind of what's happening so you can see that all of these solids are included into this one when we use the union command which is located here I can select all of these shapes and then that's just gonna blend them all together and make them one so now we have that option that we do have right alright so for the next thing here is that we have to put a chamfer on these and kinda of depending on this one the chamfer is is not a equal one and what I mean by that is if I jump back to the drawing is that we have two different heights right we have a height that is going here and we have a height that is going here well this top line that I drew last is really simple you know that number is sitting here at the bottom and then this number here is the one that we had calculated before right so I'm just gonna label it as a Y but remember we figured that out by subtracting this number minus this number here so when we do the simple math on that one and luckily for us this Y has to equal to and I hate to t speak in a math term by calling them X's and Y's but it's going in the Y direction this number here is 35 and once again I will apologize for my bad handwriting with this mouse but so that Y is going to equal to 35 so those are going to be the two components that I'm going to need when I create the chamfer on my on my shape here okay now I noticed that somehow with this newer version of AutoCAD it only lets you do one edge at a time I haven't figured that out yet of why it's doing this but we're going to jump to the solid tab and then underneath the fillet edge we're going to have the one that says chamfer edge now we're going to give it two distances right so I'm going to say hey give me a distance remember we have those two numbers first one will be 50 go ahead and hit enter and the second one will be 35 now does not matter which order you put them in because you will get an option to select them so I'm gonna do it the reverse way when I do it for the other edge here so I'm gonna select this edge and what it's gonna look at is gonna go hey is that what you want And in this case no it is not gonna be what I want right if I hit the enter button you see that it, it, it wants to do all of that that is not exactly what I want so I'm just gonna hit the escape button here let's go back to the chamfer edge and then we're going to go to the distance and do the exact same thing we did before, right? We're going to go 50, enter, 35, enter. And then when I select this edge, it's going to say, hey, that's what you want. And I go, nope, 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 that is not what I want. So I'm just going to hit the distance button again, and then I'll reverse my numbers. I'll type in 35, enter, and then 50, enter. Now you see that I do have the way I want it. I'll go ahead and hit the enter button. See, right now it tells me to select another edge or a face uh, for some strange reason. When I do that, huh, now it seems to be working. Huh? Typical examples. But now I have both of these edges the way I want them. I'm just going to go ahead and hit the enter button. That looks exactly like what I want. Let's go ahead and hit enter again. And now we're finished this shape, right? So all of the 3D stuff is done. We have it in the correct orientation. My front view is facing this way, my right side and my top view. Let's go ahead and jump over to doing the drafting portion of this. The way I like to do it is start off by hitting the layout tab here. Immediately go ahead and delete that viewport. Let's go ahead and create a title block here. Really simple. And I'll just go ahead and type in the rectangle command. REC, enter, 0, 0, enter. And then I'll go ahead and put my upper left at 17, 11, enter. Now these is, this is going to be a B-size drawing. Let's go ahead and zoom to these extents all right next thing I want to do is go ahead and do the offset command I'm just gonna type in O enter all of these commands are also located if you are a button type person they're all located here you can see that here's the offset command and here's the rectangle but I, I'm just gonna go ahead and type them in so O enter 0.25 enter 
select this rectangle here and then click on to the inside right let's go ahead and set up and make our paper size here the same so I'm just going to do a right click on this layout one page setup manager go to modify here I will select down in the drop down here and go to DWG to PDF next it's going to be ANSI full bleed B size 17 by 11 I've been lately selecting the window option and I'll do the exact same thing here I'll go to window and what I like to select is this inside rectangle endpoint going down to this inside one here at the bottom once I select that I'm just gonna tell it that I want it to be centered so I'll select this box here and I'm gonna leave it at one to one hit the OK button it should zoom into that Go ahead and hit close on here zoom out a little bit next let's go ahead and put our drawing in here right we're gonna use the base command so if it's not located here on your home tab it should be located let's see well usually yes it's located here on your layout tab and then we're gonna to go to base from model space and once again it's gonna give it a little bit of time to cook behind it it automatically defines and puts in your front view first so I'm just gonna go left click here hit enter then I'll go above it here do a left click here come this direction do a left click and then I'll go ahead and put my isometric here in the corner left click hit the enter button after that last left click and it should create all of your views right now you can see those hidden lines that I was referring to earlier we have a hidden line here and we have one here let's go ahead and update this view here so I'm just gonna select this one go to edit view and let's go ahead and make this one shaded so underneath the hidden lines here let's go shade it with visible lines and that should change this view for me go ahead and hit the OK button and now we already have our hidden lines defined let me jump back to the home tab here and then what I'm looking for is the layer so let's go to layers you see this hidden line one let's go ahead and make that blue so I'm just gonna select that icon there make it color number five and then I'll go ahead and create a dimension one for us right so I'm just gonna select the new layer type in DIM that's gonna make me a dimension layer and since I was standing on this last one you see it took all the same properties of that that's kinda of not what I want but I'll go ahead and change them so where this color is blue I'm gonna select that icon and make it color number one which is red and then I'm gonna change the line types right so the line type in here is hidden let's go ahead and make them back to continuous lines and it should change them here now we can hit close on here Let's jump to the annotation tab and I hope you notice that those hidden lines should have turned blue for you jump to the annotation tab we're gonna tell our dimensions to be on the dimension layer and then we're gonna go ahead and adjust our dimension style this one should be relatively simple so we're gonna set up the standard or annotation we're using paper space both of them will apply doesn't matter which one you use so I'll go ahead and use the standard go to modify I always start from the right to the left for some strange reason it's just how my brain works so I'm going to start here on the primary units I'll go ahead and suppress the trailing zeros underneath the fit let's leave this at one underneath the text let's go ahead and make this a little bit smaller make it 0.125 and this one doesn't have any center marks or things of that nature so I'm just going to go ahead and select it to none anyway just out of habit and practice go and hit the OK button and then close all right so now we're going to start by doing some dimensions I'm going to work on this one first let's go ahead and use a linear dimension and we want that dimension to be here toward the bottom so I'm going to select this endpoint first come down this way and then it'll put that dimension on the bottom let's go ahead and do our 35 dimensions so let's put a dimension from that endpoint to this endpoint go ahead and click it here exact same thing here on the other side so I'm just going to hit the enter button to save us some time and step from going back up there to the top I'm just gonna click those two endpoints just to keep these in line I'll select that endpoint let's jump over to this view okay let's go ahead and put these two heights links and heights on them let's put a linear dimension and remember that if it's a continuous line I can hit the enter button and that's gonna ask me to select an object I'm just gonna select this bottom line here go ahead and click here same thing again I'll hit the enter button to take me back to the linear command and hit the enter button one more time and select 
this back line here. And now I have those two, right? Let's go ahead and take a look up here at the top. Let's put a dimension on this one. So it's going to be a linear dimension. I'll go from this endpoint to this endpoint. Go ahead and click it here. And then I'm going to put my 20 dimensions in. Remember that I'm thinking that I want that dimension to go out to the side here. So just in case if it do kick it out, I want it on the outside. So I'm going to select this inside point first, this inside point, and come up and click. Same on the other side. I'll just hit the enter button. I want that dimension to kick out here to the left. So I'll select this end point first, followed by that end point. And then I'll go over here and click that end point just to keep everything in line with each other, right? All right, so that should be it for this drawing. Everything looks good. Looks you know, really relatively simple. You can see that we found those extra hidden lines and I hope that you guessed them right um, from the beginning of this video. But hopefully you enjoyed this one. Please consider liking, subscribing if this is your first time. And for those of you who are keep coming back and are recent subscribers, I want to send out a big thank you to it. And thanks for the encouragement to help keep me going. All right. So until the next video, thank you.